Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and this little video will be all about foreign keys. I'm just going to do a little example of placing in foreign keys and um, how, to, how to put this together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm over here in SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm going to create a database where I'm going to actually deal with a database totally concern, concerning people, okay, names and addresses. So I'm going to create this database, which is really straightforward to do. I'm kind of going through some simple steps that most people might already know how to do this. Um, database name will be the person's database. And that's it. Got my database. Now, uh, on my database here, I'm actually going to do three tables in my database just to demonstrate this. And I'm going to go, if I refresh this, I should see my database, my person's database right there. And uh, I'm going to create some tables here, but what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to create a new query window. I'm going to do these by hand. So I'm going to use person database. Okay. And I'm going to create three tables. And we're going to explain why we're creating these tables that we have. Create table. And this one is going to be called person. And it's going to have one field ID int, primary key, identity, and I start at one and go by one. That's it. That's my entire table. That's the person's, person's table. I'm going to call it person's table. Okay, seems kind of odd, one field, but you'll see what I'm going to be doing with this. Now, I'm going to create another table. This table will be the names table. This is where I want to store names for, for the, the people in the database. It's going to be a little bit more complex. I'm going to have the same thing. By the way, I'm just going to copy that down to here. So I'm going to, same, I'm going to use the same ID for the ID field. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and have a person ID, which will be actually a foreign key, back to the original one. And it's going to be an int. I'm going to go ahead and have prefix text. It's going to be their care. No, actually, I'm also going to put null. That lets let you know that the field can be null. Vercare 200. I'll make that so it can be null. I'm going to have first name text. I'm going to use the same Vercare. I'm going to do last name text Vercare. And the last field I'm going to have is suffix text. So there's my per names table, and then my final table will be create table addresses. And in the addresses table, I'm going to have, again, the ID, okay, int primary key, identity 11. So they all have an ID that goes with them. All the IDs are primary keys, and they're all. Uh, they're all ID identity fields. Okay, now I'm going to have another person ID. Okay, it's going to be int and I don't want those to be null. They have to be not null. The other ones can be null. So I'm going to make this not null. And a few more fields here. I'm going to have number. That, however, is going to be a ver care. I'll call it street number. Their care, and I'll make this like 20. Then I'm going to go ahead and have a few others. I'm going to have street. Okay, I'm going to make those all their care 200s. Okay, street, their care 200. City, their care 200. State, their care 2. Just going to use abbreviations and zip code and notice that state needs to be in brackets because it is a keyword and this is going to be their care and I'll make it so that I can actually do the 5 plus 4 which is 9 which actually means I have to have 10 fields because there's a dash between them and that's it those are my tables and voila all those tables are created now I haven't created the foreign keys yet but I actually see this table here and what have I what have I done here Give you some time to think about it. The person's table itself, all it has is an ID. 
There's, there's nothing else. It's just an identity field uh, ID. Well, the reason is people can have multiple names. Okay, they can have um, a maiden name and then a not, and then a maiden name after that. Um, they can have multiple addresses associated with them too. So to do this, I have this what's called a one-to-many relationship, where the person is a unique individual one, and there's many's that can point to that. And the idea is that the names and the addresses do have to point back to the to the foreign key. So if you create a foreign key, the way this works is you have one table that is being referenced. Okay, in this case, the table being referenced is going to be the person's table, and the field being referenced is going to be the ID ID field. Then you have a, a field and another table that points to that reference. Okay, now. What I'm going to do here in this person's database is I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go ahead and um, in the database itself, I'm going to create, oops, I'm going to create a database diagram. Okay. And in the database diagram, I'm going to put all three tables. Now you can actually see the three fields that are there. Oh, the three tables there. Whoops, I'm missing a table. Where'd it go? There it is. I'm going to pull it down here so you can actually see all of them at the same time. So there's my three tables. Now, what do I want to do? I want to make a field in the names table point to the person's table because the names are associated with a person. And I want to make a field in the addresses table point to the person's table. Now, I've got a couple ways to do this. One is I'm going to actually go back here to this, this um, here the SQL window that I was using before, and I'm going to do this with code. Alter table, whoops, alter table, person, uh, alter table, I'm going to do the first table I'll do here is names, and I'm going to add a foreign key pointing to person ID, uh, called person ID that references persons.id. So I'm going to go point this to this, okay? Voila, okay, that was one way I add, added a foreign key. And if I go back over to here and I refresh this, should be able to refresh. Okay, I might have to close it. Okay, take that diagram, close it, and now I'm going to hit, go ahead and make it again, putting the three together, add. Now when you look at this, you'll notice that there's a link between the two to show the foreign key in there. That's one way to create a foreign key constraint. Okay, The person ID here points to the person's ID there. By the way, I could also just go to this field right here and drag it over to this one here. Okay, And it's going to ask me to create this foreign key. And voila, I've created the foreign key that way too, which is kind of neat that I could actually do it that way. So now that foreign key will exist. And then if I save this, the diagram. It's going to ask me if I want to ma make those changes permanent. And now, if I go back to the database diagram, which I can do here, um, that one there. Okay, do the modify. I can now see those three constraints. So, what does this mean? Well, the way I have this set up here is that if I have a person and they can have multiple names, and some of the names may actually be an alias, I've got this ability to keep track of that with this set of tables. But the important part of this is, is that I now have this foreign key that points back over here to this person. Now, here's the, the trick of using this. What I would normally do if I created this type of join here and I wanted to um, and I wanted to show like people's names, I would create a view in the view which has allowed me to view the names, but it would actually have the person in that part of the in part of the view. So I could go here, I could say new view, okay, and I'm going to do this with the graphical tools. It's very easy to do with the um, right, right straight through SQL, but I'm just going to do names and persons. And what will happen in this view is it'll actually automatically see that there's a relationship between the two, and it will go ahead and do the join on those. So that join now exists. Once I close this, it's going to ask me what I, if I want to save it, which I do. I'm going to call this view names, and it's now a view that shows me the names. Whoops. I closed, canceled out the save. Whoops. I 
Let's try it again. Get new view. Okay, names, person, add, close, right there. Okay, that is my view. I have to tell it what columns I want. I'm going to want this ID, which is the person. And then I want this ID. I don't need the person ID because it's pointing to that. But I also want the prefix, the first name, the last name, and the suffix. So all those pieces are in there. Now I can go ahead, since I hadn't selected any of them before, I can now go ahead and close this. I'm going to call this now view person. And using the tool, I put the whole thing together. And if I go to the views, okay, I can now do a script view as. And I can look at that view. Okay. Notice it puts a lot of extra stuff in here. Okay. Okay. Whereas I really just want to see the basic stuff here. Whoa, look at all that stuff. But the real part of this is right up here. And when this is scrolling along, you know, you really can't see a lot of that. It's a lot easier if I actually do it this way. So you can see each of the individual fields. Okay, see those fields? There's first name, last name, suffix, and that ID. Notice it changed dbo.names ID because ID was in there twice. It changed it to as express xbr1. And I can just make this name ID. I can get rid of the rest of this. Okay, all these extended properties that I don't care about, I'm getting rid of those. Now it's just the view. I can recompile it. Okay, notice that it says it can't create it, so I'm going to make this an alter, recompile, and now that's my view. Okay, a few little nice changes that I could put in here too, like this as. Okay, put this as prefix, not just pre not prefix text. Make this first. Make this last. And suffix. And if you kind of want, what do we mean by suffix? Things like Esquire, MD, whatever. You know, things that you put at the end of your name. Voila. And now it's compiled nicely. So what I've done in this is I showed creation of three tables, very straightforward creation of three tables, the concept of that one-to-many relationship that you have, and putting in the foreign keys to make the whole thing work. So there is a great example of tables, table joins, foreign key relationships, and how to handle one-to-many relationships, all in one nice little concise lecture, and creation of some views. That's it for today.